Gilbano Abutai Erito, good evening to everyone, welcome. Bakasha Rishona, the Mahet of the Shabak of Mossad, Anna Kabu Telefoni. Either the security people who are working for the security services, please shut down your phones. I promise you nothing tragic will happen in the next two hours. I'm willing to take the risk. Welcome. Uh, we will start with the greetings of uh, the rector of the university, Professor Mary Faust. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Professor Bakor family, Bakor family, Professor Rosman, Rosman family, Professor Kaplan, Professor Engel, dear uh, colleagues, friends, students, faculty members. Um, welcome to Barilat University. Um, I like very much the title of this conference, and especially the last word of the title, Revisited. Uh, actually, I think that every title of every conference should include the word Revisited. Because, you know, uh, the main mission of scientists in a research university is to create, to innovate, to revise, in other words, and an absolutely essential ingredient of any kind of creative achievement is thinking differently, revisiting. This is, an, an, as I said, an essential major component. Um, it's a huge challenge to think differently. It involves rejecting traditional views or traditional ways of looking at things, non-conformity, open-mindedness, uh, not easy because psychologically and brain-wise we are wired, wired to be conventional, to think conventionally. It's much easier, it's much more parsimonious and it's very difficult with regard to the future, to look differently at the future. It's not easy uh, to think differently about the present, but I think it's, it's a major difficulty uh, to think differently about the past. We tend to be fixated on the past. And the challenge is even bigger because in order to be not only innovative and creative, but to be also relevant, uh, in order to really create, one has to know a lot, to know all the facts, uh, to have a, a really wide uh, knowledge in the area where one creates. And when we know a lot, it's even more difficult uh, to innovate and to change what we know. I call it always the expertise creativity paradox. You need to be an expert in order to be relevant, but when you are an expert, it's very difficult to look differently on things that you've learned long time ago, were presented to you in a certain way. So, again, it's, it's a huge challenge, and especially with the past. But uh, uh, our two honored scientists, Professor Bogor and Professor Rosman, did succeed in thinking differently and in changing the past. Uh, among other things, Professor Bacon changed the past and, and changed the way we look at Agudat Israel, the role of Agudat Israel, Dan Torah, Hasidut. Professor Osman changed the way we now see the Besh, the Baal Shem Tov, the life of Jewish women uh, in Poland, in Eastern Europe, historiography of Polish Jewry. Um, a major challenge, and in changing the past, we all know that they change the present and they change the future because that's the way it goes. Um, from people who work with Bacon and Rosman on a day to day basis, I learned that they are not only great scientists, but both are also great colleagues, great teachers, great supervisors to the, to the graduate students. And as the rector of this university, I want to thank you really from the bottom of my heart for whatever you did, whatever you are doing, and whatever you are going to do, I'm sure. Um, I want to end by uh, citing two rabbis, Eastern, Europe, Eastern European rabbis, who um, discussed the Hebrew name of Poland, which is Pauline, and the implications for the Jewish history, uh, for the history of Jews in Poland. So the first is Rabbi Menachem Mendel Yerimano, who said, I say it in Hebrew, and then come back in English, Sheamar Polim Yotiot Polim. 
על שם מה שכתוב בספר במדבר, דין הוא פה הלילה, שיש ללון ולשב בפולין כל משך ליל הגלות עד ביאת פועל צדק. פולין is been sleep over here, and מנחם בן אלפור רימנוף actually emphasizes the dark side of Jewish history in Poland, because you sleep at night, and night is dark, and Jews experience many dark periods in Poland, as we all know. But the Lubavitch, or rather, the Rebbe from Lubavitch, also emphasized another aspect of this complicated history, and he says, ידוע שבעת שראשוני היהודים באו לגור בפולין, אמרו שפולין היא מלשון פולין, שכאן ילו בזמן ומקום הגלות. לינה היא בלילה דווקא, שגלות היא בדוגמת עניין הלילה. זאת אומרת שהפירוש לפולין הוא שהמקורים במקום הזה הם רק עניין של לינה בזמן הגלות. אבל לאחר זה יצאו מזה ויבואו למקום האמיתי של כל יהודי ארץ ישראל, בגאולה האמיתית והשלמה. אבל אידך גיסא, הרי זה בכל זאת באופן דלי, ואף על פי שעדיין נמצאים בגלות, הרי הקדוש ברוך הוא עוזר, וישנו מקום ללון במנוחה, כפי שהיה בשנים הטובות בפולין, שבני ישראל גרו שם במנוחה. He actually emphasizes the bright side. The periods uh, when Jews really had very good times in Poland, felt welcome in Poland. We then remember only the dark times, but the history of Jews in, in Poland is very, very complicated. And I'm happy that this conference is dedicated to this history, uh, as I am sure that we have a lot to learn about it. So thank you very much for coming. I want to thank the organizing committee and the Department for Jewish History and Contemporary Jewry. for organizing, and I wish you, and I'm sure you're going to have a very, very interesting conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Kraut. Good evening, everyone. For the sake of our respectful guests from Poland, Germany, and the United States, I will begin with a few sentences in Hebrew, and then return to English. So please bear with me for a minute, and don't run away. פרופסור בקון, פרופסור רוסמן, משפחות בקון ורוסמן, חברות וחברים של גרשון ומשה, רקטור האוניברסיטה פרופסור מירי פאוסט, סגן השגריר הפולני מר פיוטר קוסלובסקי, עמיתיי למחלקה, לפקולטה, לאוניברסיטה וממוסדות אקדמיים אחרים, אורחות ואורחים מכובדיי כולכם. עומד אני כאן ברגשות מאוד מעורבים, רגע של שמחה והנחת רווחה אחרי חודשים של עבודה מאומצת על כנס זה. ורגע של עצב עמוק על כך שצעדיכם וקולותיכם, גרשון ומשה, אינם עוד חלק מעמולת החיים של מסדרונות המחלקה. באחד משיריו המפורסמים של שלמה ארצי ישנו משפט: הייתי חלק מהנוף, היום אני אורח. זהו מעבר לא פשוט לכולם, ובהתחשב בשלל הבדיחות על טבען של פולניות ושל יהודים פולנים, זה מאוד לא פשוט. מאחר שבכנס זה משתתפים שורה של חוקרות וחוקרים מפולין, מגרמניה ומארצות הברית, אשוב כעת לאנגלית ברשותכם, אני מקווה שכל היושבים כאן מבינים אנגלית, ובמידה שלא זו הזדמנות להמליץ בחום ללמוד שפה חשובה זו. Dear Gershon and Moshe, groom and groom in the right age, family, friends, students and colleagues, director of Bar-Ilan University, Professor Mary Faust, Mr. Piotr Kozlowski, deputy of the Polish ambassador, Ms. Hoffman and Mr. Wolensky of the Polish Institute in Tel Aviv, Distinguished guests, good evening, thank you and welcome. We are thrilled to have you all here with us and very much looking forward to a lively and intellectually challenging two-day conference. As you can imagine, imagine, orchestrating this conference took a great deal of work. In addition to the academic and administrative aspects, we faced a serious hurdle that anyone who has twins is well aware of. The struggle to balance between what they have in common and yet leaving space for each one and his or her unique personality. Indeed, academically, we are looking at twins, both internationally renowned scholars in the field of Polish Jewish history, both critical and uncompromising with anything to do with academic excellence. Both go back several decades to mutual graduate studies. Atypical to academic loneliness, they insisted on sharing an office at the department throughout the years. On a personal level, also rather unique in the academic scene, both unassuming, modest, approachable, sensitive, and lovely people. Given this, we knew that organizing a conference for both would work just fine. As I claim no expertise in Polish Jewish history, I'm not in any position to comment on Gershon or Moshe's academic accomplishments, but will share with you a brief personal insight 
regarding their unique qualities, just like twins. First and foremost, their retirement ends a significant era in the history of our department and institution, as both are ordained conservative rabbis. Notwithstanding the strong orthodox affiliation of bar Ilan, the forefathers of our department thankfully had sufficient open-mindedness to accept these potential Trojan horses. <laughs> Mind you, the first notable difference between our twins is that while Gershon does not seem to have any serious hang-ups with his conservative training and identity, Moshe seems to have a handful of them. Just try to relate to Moshe as rabbi professor and you will see for yourself. Another difference is that Gershon seems to be the responsible adult, while Moshe not quite. <laughs> as Uriel Gelman and I learned while dealing with this conference, Gershon was accepted and cooperative, Moshe not exactly. To be more straightforward, as Moshe prefers, I will not mix words. He told me several times that he will not attend, as he does not want this event to begin with, and not interested in eulogies. I responded that I will be happy to refer those who will come directly to him to inquire about his absence from what he defined as his own funeral. <laughs> as you can imagine, this did not help matters, and characterizing his behavior as typical of a teenager did not help either. So thank you, Moshe, for honoring us with your presence. As mentioned, as mentioned, Gershon was much easier to deal with, and as always, he projects the balanced, responsible, and adult-like approach. But this approach is expressed with a great sense of humor and self-humor. Some years back, Gershon had a Polish PhD student who was not Jewish. At bar Ilan, there are compulsory introductory courses in Judaism and Jewish studies that every student is obliged to take. These apply to Jewish students while the university offers alternative courses to non-Jewish students. Nevertheless, this student expressed strong interest in these courses, and Gershon fought so that she be granted special permission to attend some of these courses per her interest. He persuasively rejected the argument regarding the chance that this would bring about her developing a relationship with a Jewish student. Lo and behold, this is what happened. And Gershon's response was, I quote, well, I guess I made my modest contribution to Jewish assimilation. <laughs> two very different personalities, but two first-rate scholars. Both intellectually honest and straightforward, and both outstanding colleagues. This explains why it was surprisingly easy to line up an international dream team of scholars for this conference. Gershon and Moshe, this is a unique outpour of love and appreciation to you two. I further salute you two for pulling up your sleeves and entering the academic battlefield, as well as this institution's one specifically, in order to fight for what you believed in and thought was right and just. And in this context, several of us younger scholars owe you our academic careers. Believe me, a great deal behind hide, hides behind this sentence, probably enough for another two-day conference. In this and many other aspects, you both serve for me personally as role models. We owe tremendous gratitude to many people who have made this happen. Uriel Gelman and I had the privilege of collaborating with Professor Michal Galas of the Agilonian University, and Marcin, I got it right, Marcin Bujinski uh, of the University of Wroclaw and enjoyed incredible goodwill, patience, and cooperation. The significant representation of Polish scholars present here is all to their credit. Thank you both. We thank, <laughs> we thank all the representatives, don't worry, I'm getting to you. We thank all the representatives of the various institutions that assisted us financially and enabled this dream to become a reality. They all appear on the invitation. Please forgive me for not naming them, each one of them, one by one, as chances are we'll miss one and never hear the end of it. Finally, two people deserve all the compliments and gratitude for hours and hours of endless work. Working with Uriel Gelman, so I learned, is a thorough pleasure and a real treat. Uriel, you are calm and easygoing and project a pleasant, unassuming and restful atmosphere. This, without giving up rather highly high scholarly standards and being a tough and critical client to satisfy. Your quiet and ever so respective and your quiet and ever so respective manners lead me to suspect that you are not Israeli and possibly not even Jewish. <laughs> a few days ago, I commented to Uriel in passing that he will surely feel relieved not to hear from me every other day with something or the other. 
In line with various stereotypical jokes regarding Polish Jewish women, he responded as follows. Sure, now that you will not need my help anymore, you probably won't recognize me in the corridors. <laughs> well, I guess you need some quiet time, my friend. And since you like to drink wine, just combine both. My modest personal token for you over here with much appreciation and admiration is two bottles of wine. <laughs>